महाभारत आदि परवा एपिसोड सिक्स एंड हाईली पथेटिक स्टोरी ऑफ नाला इलस्ट्रेटिंग द पेशेंस ऑफ द मेन्ती एंड द कैरेक्टर ऑफ नाला देन द एक्वायरमेंट बाय युधिष्ठिरा ऑफ द मिस्ट्रीज ऑफ डाइस फ्रॉम द सेम ग्रेट सेज देन द अराइवल ऑफ द ऋषि लोमसा फ्रॉम द हेवन्स टू वेयर द पांडव वर्ड and the receipt by these high souled dwellers in the woods of the intelligence brought by the rishi of their brother arjuna staving in the heavens then the pilgrimage of the pandavas to various sacred spots in accordance with the message of arjuna and their attainment of great merit and virtue consequent on such pilgrimage then the pilgrimage of the great sage narada to the shrine putasta also the pilgrimage of the high souled pandavas Here is the deprivation of Karna of his earrings by Indra. Here also is recited the sacrificial magnificence of Gaya. Then the story of Agastya in which the Rishi ate up the Asura Vatapi and his connubial connection with Lopamudra from the desire of offspring. Then the story of Rishya Sringa who adopted Brahmacharya mode of life from his very boyhood. Then the history of Rama of great prowess, the son of Jamdagni. in which has been narrated the death of kartavirya and the hahyas then the meeting between the pandavas and the vrishnis in the sacred spot called prabhasa then the story of sukanya in which chavana the son of bhrigu made the twins aswinis drink at the sacrifice of king saryati the som jews from which they had been excluded by the other gods and in which besides is shown how chavana himself acquired perpetual youth as a boon from the grateful aswinis then hath been described the history of king mandhata then the history of prince jantu and how king somka by offering up his only son jantu in sacrifice obtained a hundred others then the excellent history of the hawk and the pigeon then the examination of king sivi by indra agni and dharma then the story of ashtavakra in which occurs the disputation at the sacrifice of janaka between that rishi and the first of logicians vandi the son of varuna the defeat of vandi by the great ashtavakra and the release by the rishi of his father from the depths of the ocean then the story of yavakrita and then that of the great ravya then the departure of the pandavas for gandhamadana and their abode in the asylum called narayana then bhimsena's journey to gandhamdara at the request of draupadi in search of the sweet scented flower bhima's meeting on his way in a grove of bananas with hanuman the son of pavna of great prowess bhima's bath in the tank and the destruction of the flowers therein for obtaining the sweet scented flower he was in search of his consequent battle with the mighty rakshasas and the yaksha of great prowess including hanuma the destruction of the asura jata by bhima the meeting of the pandavas with the royal sage vrishparva their departure for the asylum of arshatishena and abode therein the incitement of bhima to acts of vengeance by draupadi then is narrated the ascent on the hills of kailas by bhimsena his terrific battle with the mighty yaksha headed by hanuman then the meeting of the pandavas with vasravana kuvera and the meeting with arjuna after he had obtained for the purpose of yudhishthira many celestial weapons then arjuna's terrible encounter with the nevatyu kavachas dwelling in hiranyaparva and also with the palamas and the kalakeyas their destruction at the hands of arjuna the commencement of the display of the celestial weapons by arjuna before yudhishthira the prevention of the same by narada the descent of the pandavas from gandhamadana the seizure of bhima in the forest by a mighty serpent huge as the mountain his release from the calls of the snake upon yudhishthira's answering certain questions the return of the pandavas to the kamyaka woods here is described the reappearance of vasudeva to see the mighty sons of pandu the arrival of markande and various recitals the history of prithu the son of vena recited by the great rishi the stories of saraswati and the rishi tarkya after these is the story of matsya other old stories recited by markande the stories of indradyumna and dhundhumara then the history of the chaste wife the history of angira the meeting and conversation of draupadi and satyabhama the return of the pandavas to the forest of dwata
then the procession to see the calves and the captivity of Duryodhan, and when the wretch was being carried off, his rescue by Arjuna, here is Yudhishthira's dream of the deer, then the re-entry of the Pandavas into the Kamyaka forest, here also is the long story of Vrihidronika, here also is recited the story of Durvasa, then the abduction by Jayadratha of Draupadi from the asylum, the pursuit of the revisher by Bhima Swift as the heir and the ill-shaving of Jayadratha's crown at Bhima's hand. Here is the long history of Rama in which is shown how Rama by his prowess slew Ravana in battle. Here also is narrated the story of Savitri, then Karna's deprivation by Indra of his earrings, then the presentation to Kama by the gratified Indra of a Sakti, missile weapon, which had the virtue of killing only one person against whom it might be hurled, then the story called Aranya in which Dharma, the god of justice, gave advice to his son, Yudhishthira, in which, besides is recited how the Pandavas after having obtained a who went towards the west. These are all included in the third parva called Aranyaka, consisting of 269 sections. The number of shlokas is 11,664. The extensive parva that comes next is called Virata. The Pandavas arriving at the dominions of Virata saw in a cemetery on the outskirts of the city a large shamitri whereon they kept their weapons. Here hath been recited their entry into the city and their stay there in disguise. Then the slaying by Bhima of the wicked Kichakar who, senseless with lust, had sought Draupadi, the appointment by Prince Duryodhan of clever spies, and their dispatch to all sides for tracing the Pandavas, the failure of these to discover the mighty sons of Pandu, the first seizure of Virata's kind by the Trigurtas, and the terrific battle that ensued, the capture of Virata by the enemy and his rescue by Bhimsena, the release also of the kind H.Y. the Pandav, Bhima, the seizure of Virata's kind again by the Kurus, the defeat in battle of all the Kurus by the single-handed Arjuna, the release of the king's kind, the bestowal by Virata of his daughter Uttara for Arjuna's acceptance on behalf of his son by Subhadra, Abhimanyu the destroyer of foes. These are the contents of the extensive fourth Parvada Virata. The great Rishi Vyasa has composed in these 67 sections. The number of shlokas is 2050. Listen then to the contents of the fifth parva which must be known as Udyoga. While the Pandavas, desirous of victory, were residing in the place called Upaplavya, Duryodhan and Arjuna both went at the same time to Vasudeva and said, You should render us assistance in this war. The high-souled Krishna, upon these words being Anand, replied, O ye first of men, a counsellor in myself who will not fight and one Akshashini of troops, which of these shall I give to which of you? Blind to his own interests, the foolish Duryodhan asked for the troops, while Arjuna solicited Krishna as an unfighting counsellor. Then is described how, when the king of Madra was coming for the assistance of the Pandavas, Duryodhan, having deceived him on the way by presence and hospitality, induced him to grant a boon and then solicited his assistance in battle. How Salya, having passed his word to Duryodhan, went to the Pandavas and consoled them by reciting the history of Indra's victory over Vritra. Then comes the dispatch by the Pandavas of their Purohita, priest, to the Korvas. Then is described how King Dhritarashtra of great prowess, having heard the word of the Purohita of the Pandavas and the story of Indra's victory decided upon sending his Purohita and ultimately dispatched Sanjay as envoy to the Pandavas from desire for peace. Here hath been described the sleeplessness of Dhritarashtra from anxiety upon hearing all about the Pandavas and their friends, Vasudeva and others. It was on this occasion that Vidura addressed to the wise king Dhritarashtra various counsels that were full of wisdom. It was here also that Sanat Sujata recited to the anxious and sorrowing monarch the excellent truths of spiritual philosophy. On the next morning Sanjay spoke, in the court of the king, of the identity of Vasudeva and Arjuna. 
It was then that the illustrious Krishna, moved by kindness and a desire for peace, went himself to the Korva capital, Hastinpura, for bringing about peace. Then comes the rejection by Prince Duryodhan of the embassy of Krishna who had come to solicit peace for the benefit of both parties. Here hath been recited the story of Dambodvava, then the story of the high-souled Matuli's search for a husband for his daughter, then the history of the great sage Galva, then the story of the training and discipline of the son of Vidula, then the exhibition by Krishna. Before the assembled Rajas, of his yoga powers upon learning the evil counsels of Duryodhan and Kamu, then Krishna's taking Karna in his chariot and his tendering to him of advice, and Karna's rejection of the same from pride. Then the return of Krishna, the chastiser of enemies from Hastinpura to Upaplavya, and his narration to the Pandavas of all that had happened, it was then that those oppressors of foes, the Pandavas, having heard all and consulted properly with each other, made every preparation for war. Then comes the march from Hastinpura, for hattle, of foot soldiers, horses, charioteers and elephants. Then the tale of the troops by both parties. Then the dispatch by Prince Duryodhan of Uluka, as in woe to the Pandavas on the day previous to the battle. Then the tale of charioteers of different classes. Then the story of Amba. These all have been described in the fifth parva called Udyoga of the Bharatha, abounding with incidents appertaining to war and peace. O ye ascetics, the great Vyasa hath composed 186 sections in this parva. The number of shlokas also composed in this by the great Rishi is 6698. Then is recited the Bhishma Parva replete with wonderful incidents. In this hath been narrated by Sanjay the formation of the region known as Jambu. Here hath been described the great depression of Yudhishthira's army and also a fierce fight for ten successive days. In this the high-souled Vasudeva by reasons based on the philosophy of final release drove away Arjuna's compunction springing from the latter's regard for his kindred whom he was on the eve of slaying. In this the magnanimous Krishna, attentive to the welfare of Yudhishthira, seeing the loss inflicted on the Pandav army, descended swiftly from his chariot himself and ran, with dauntless breast, his driving whip in hand, to effect the death of Bhishma. In this, Krishna also smote with piercing words Arjuna the bearer of the Gandiva and the foremost in battle among all wielders of weapons. In this, the foremost of bowmen, Arjuna, placing Shikandin before him and piercing Bhishma with his sharpest arrows felled him from his chariot. In this, Bhishma lay stretched on his bed of arrows. This extensive parva is known as the sixth in the Bharatha. In this have been composed 117 sections. The number of shlokas is 5,884 as told by Vyasa conversant with the Vedas. Then is recited the wonderful parva called Drona full of incidents. First comes the installation in the command of the army of the great instructor in arms. Drona then the vow made by that great master of weapons of seizing the wise Yudhishthira in battle to please Duryodhan, then the retreat of Arjuna from the field before the Sansaptakas, then the overthrow of Bhagdatta like to a second Indra in the field with the elephant Supritika by Arjuna, then the death of the hero Abhimanyu in his teens, alone and unsupported at the hands of many Maharathas including Jayadrathu, then after the death of Abhimanyu, the destruction by Arjuna, in battle of seven Akshohinis of troops and then of Jayadratha, then the entry, by Bhima of mighty arms and by that foremost of warriors in chariot, Satyaki, into the Korva ranks impenetrable even to the gods, in search of Arjuna in obedience to the orders of Yudhishthira, and the destruction of the remnant of the Sansaptakas. In the Drona Parva, is the death of Alambusha, of Shrutyus, of Jalsandha, of Shundatta, of Virata, 
of the great warrior in chariot Drupadu, of Ghatotkacha and others, in this parva, Aswatthaman, excited beyond measure at the fall of his father in battle, discharged the terrible weapon Narayana. Then the glory of Rudra in connection with the burning of the three cities. Then the arrival of Vyasa and recital by him of the glory of Krishna and Arjuna. This is the great seventh parva of the Bharatha, in which all the heroic chiefs and princes mentioned were sent to their account. The number of sections in this is 170. The number of shlokas as composed in the Drona Parva by Rishi Vyasa, the son of Parasra and the possessor of true knowledge after much meditation, is 8909. Then comes the most wonderful Parva called Karna. In this is narrated the appointment of the wise king of Madra as Karna's charioteer. Then the history of the fall of the Asura Tripura. Then the application to each other by Karna and Salya of harsh words on their setting out for the field. Then the story of the swan and the crow recited in insulting allusion. Then the death of Pandya at the hands of the high-souled Aswatthaman. Then the death of Dandasena. Then that of Darda. Then Yudhishthira's imminent risk in single combat with Karna in the presence of all the warriors, then the mutual wrath of Yudhishthira and Arjuna, then Krishna's pacification of Arjuna. In this parva, Dhinu, in fulfillment of his vow, having ripped open Dusasana's breast in battle drank the blood of his heart. Then Arjuna slew the great Karna in single combat. Readers of the Bharatha call this the eighth parva. The number of sections in this is 69 and the number of shlokas is 4962. Then hath been recited the wonderful parva called Salya. After all the great warriors had been slain, the king of Madra became the leader of the Korva army. The encounters one after another of charioteers have been here described. Then comes the fall of the great Salya at the hands of Yudhishthira, the just. Here also is the death of Shakuni in battle at the hands of Sahdeva. Upon only a small remnant of the troops remaining alive after the immense slaughter, Duryodhan went to the lake and creating for himself room within its waters lay stretched there for some time. Then is narrated the receipt of this intelligence by Bhima from the Fowlers, then is narrated how, moved by the insulting speeches of the intelligent Yudhishthiru, Duryodhan ever unable to bear affronts, came out of the waters. Then comes the encounter with clubs, between Duryodhan and Bhima, then the arrival, at the time of such encounter, of Balram, then is described the sacredness of the Saraswati, then the progress of the encounter with clubs, then the fracture of Duryodhan's thighs in battle by Dhima with a terrific hurl of his mink. These all have been described in the wonderful ninth parva. In this the number of sections is 59 and the number of shlokas composed by the great Vyasada spreader of the fame of the Korvas is 3220. Then shall I describe the parva called Soptika of frightful incidents. On the Pandavas having gone away, the mighty charioteers, Kritvarman, Kripa, and the son of Drona, came to the field of battle in the evening and there saw King Duryodhan lying on the ground, his thighs broken and himself covered with blood. Then the great charioteer, the son of Drona, of terrible wrath, woe, without killing all the Panchalas including Drishtadyumna, and the Pandavas also with all their allies, I will not take off armor having spoken those words. The three warriors leaving Duryodhan's side entered the great forest just as the sun was setting. While sitting under a large banya tree in the night, they saw an owl killing numerous crows one after another. At the sight of this, Aswatthaman, his heart full of rage at the thought of his father's fate, resolved to slay the slumbering Panchalas. And wending to the gate of the camp, he saw there a Rakshasa of frightful visage, his head reaching to the very heavens, guarding the entrance, and seeing that Rakshasa obstructing all his weapons, the son of Drona speedily pacified by worship the three-eyed Rudra.
and then accompanied by Kritvarman and Kripa he slew all the sons of Draupadi, all the Panchalas with Drishtadyumna and others, together with their relatives, slumbering unsuspectingly in the night. All perished on that fatal night except the five Pandavas and the great warrior Satyaki. Those escaped owing to Krishna's counsels, then the charioteer of Drishtadyumma brought to the Pandavas intelligence of the slaughter of the slumbering Panchalas by the son of Drona. Then Draupadi distressed at the death of her sons and brothers and father sat before her lords resolved to kill herself by fasting. Then Bhima of terrible prowess, moved by the words of Draupadi, resolved to please her and speedily taking up his make followed in wrath the son of his preceptor in arms. The son of Drona from fear of Bhimsena and impelled by the fates and moved also by anger discharged a celestial weapon saying, This is for the destruction of all the Pandavas, then Krishna saying, This shall not be neutralized Aswathaman's speech. Then Arjuna neutralized that weapon by one of his own. Seeing the wicked Aswathaman's destructive intentions, Dwapayana and Krishna pronounced curses on him which the latter returned. Pandav then deprived the mighty warrior in chariot Aswanthaman of the jewel on his head and became exceedingly glad and boastful of their success, made a present of it to the sorrowing Draupadi. Thus the tenth parva, called Samtika, is recited. The great Vyasa Hath composed this in 18 sections. The number of shlokas also composed in this by the great reciter of sacred truths is 870. In this parva has been put together by the great Rishi the two parvas called Soptika and Ashika. After this Hath been recited the highly pathetic parva called Stri. Dhritarashtra of prophetic eye, afflicted at the death of his children, and moved by enmity towards Bhima, broke into pieces a statue of hard iron deftly placed before him by Krishna as substitute of Bhima. Then Vidura, removing the distressed Dhritarashtra's affection for worldly things by reasons pointing to final release, consoled that wise monarch. Then hath been described the wending of the distressed Dhritarashtra accompanied by the ladies of his house to the field of battle of the Korvas. Here follow the pathetic wailings of the wives of the slain heroes. Then the wrath of Gandhari and Dhritarashtra and their loss of consciousness. Then the Kshatriya ladies saw those heroes, their unreturning sons, brothers and fathers lying dead on the field. Then the pacification by Krishna of the wrath of Gandhari distressed at the death of her sons and grandsons. Then the cremation of the bodies of the diseased Rajas with due rites by that monarch, Yudhishthira, of great wisdom and the foremost also of all virtuous men. Then upon the presentation of water of the manes of the diseased princes having commenced, the story of Kunti's acknowledgement of Karna as her son bomb in secret. Those have all been described by the great Rishi Vyasa in the highly pathetic 11th Parva. Its perusal moveth every feeling heart with sorrow and even draweth tears from the eyes. The number of sections composed is 27. The number of shlokas is 775. 12th in number cometh the Santi Parva which increaseth the understanding and in which is related the despondency of Yudhishthira on his having slain his fathers, brothers, sons, maternal uncles and matrimonial relations. In this parva is described how from his bed of arrows Bhishma expounded various systems of duties worth the study of kings desirous of knowledge. This parva expounded the duties relative to emergencies with full indications of time and reasons. By understanding these, a person attaineth to consummate knowledge. The mysteries also of final emancipation have been expatiated upon. This is the twelfth Purva the favorite of the wise. It consists of 339 sections and contains 14,732 shlokas. Next in order is the excellent Anusana Parva. In it is described how Yudhishthira, the king of the Kurus, 
was reconciled to himself on bearing the exposition of duties by Bhishma, the son of Bhagirathi. This parva treats of rules in detail and of dharma and artha, then the rules of charity and its merits, then the qualifications of duns and the supreme rai regarding gifts. This parva also describes the ceremonials of individual duty, the rules of conduct and the matchless merit of truth. This Parva showeth the great merit of Brahmanas and Kain, and unraveleth the mysteries of duties in relation to time and place. These are embodied in the excellent Parva called Anusana of varied incidents. In this hearth being described the ascension of Bhishma to heaven. This is the thirteenth Purva which hath laid down accurately the various duties of men. The number of sections in this is 146. The number of shlokas is 8000. Then comes the 14th Parva Aswamedhika. In this is the excellent story of Samvarta and Marutta. Then is described the discovery by the Pandavas of golden treasuries and then the birth of Parikshit who was revived by Krishna after having been burnt by the celestial weapon of Aswathaman. The battles of Arjuna the son of Pandu, while following the sacrificial horse let loose, with various princes who in wrath seized it. Then is shown the great risk of Arjuna in his encounter with Vabruvahna the son of Chitrangada by Arjuna, the appointed daughter of the chief of Manipura. Then the story of the mongoose during the performance of the horse sacrifice. This is the most wonderful parva called Aswamedhika. The number of sections is 103. The number of shlokas composed in this by Vyasa of true knowledge is 3320. Then comes the 15th parva called Asramvasika. In this, Dhritarashtra abdicating the kingdom and accompanied by Gandhari and Vidura went to the woods. Seeing this, the virtuous Pritha also ever engaged in cherishing her superiors leaving the court of her sons, followed the old couple. In this is described the wonderful meeting through the kindness of Vyasa of the king, Dhritarashtra, with the spirits of his slain children, grandchildren, and other princes, returned from the other world. Then the monarch abandoning his sorrows acquired with his wife the highest fruit of his meritorious actions. In this parva, Vidura after having leaned on virtue all his life attaineth to the most meritorious state. The learned son of Gavlagna, Sanjay, also of passions under full control, and the foremost of ministers, attained, in the Parva, to the blessed state. In this, Yudhishthira the just met Narda and heard from him about the extinction of the rays of Vrishnis. This is the very wonderful Parva called Asrambasika. The number of sections in this is 42, and the number of shlokas composed by Vyasa cognizant of truth is 1506. After this, you know, comes the moshala of painful incidents. In this, those lion-hearted heroes of the race of Vrishni, with the scars of many a field on their bodies, oppressed with the curse of a Brahmana, while deprived of reason from drink, impelled by the fates, slew each other on the shores of the salt sea with the erka grass which, in their hands, became invested with the fatal attributes of the thunder. In this, both Balram and Keswa, Krishna, after causing the extermination of their race, there are having come, themselves did not rise superior to the sway of all destroying time. In this, Arjuna the foremost among men, going to Dwarvati, Dwarka, and seeing the city destitute of the Vrishnis was much affected and became exceedingly sorry. Then after the funeral of his maternal uncle Vasudeva the foremost among the Yadus, Vrishnis, he saw the barrows of the Yadu race lying stretched in death on the spot where they had been drinking. He then caused the cremation of the bodies of the illustrious Krishna and Balram and of the principal members of the Vrishni race. Then as he was journeying from Dwarka with the women and children, 
the old and the decrepit backslash dash backslash the remnants of the yadu rays he was met on the way by a heavy calamity he witnessed also the disgrace of his bow gandiva and the unpropitiousness of his celestial weapons seeing all this arjuna became despondent and pursuant to vyasa's advice went to yudhishthira and solicited permission to adopt the sanyasa mode of life this is the 16th parva called moshala the number of sections is 8 and the number of shlokas composed by vyasa cognizant of truth is 320 The next is Mahaprasthanika the 17th parva in this those four most among men the pandavas abdicating their kingdom went with Draupadi on their great journey called Mahaprasthana in this they came across agni having arrived on the shore of the sea of red waters in this asked by agni himself arjuna worshiped him duly returned to him the excellent celestial bow called gandiva in this leaving his brothers who dropped one after another and dropadi also yudhishthira went on his journey without once looking back on them this the 17th parva is called mahaprasthanika the number of sections in this is 3 the number of shlokas also composed by vyasa cognizant of truth is 320 the parva that comes after this you must know is the extraordinary one called swarga of celestial incidents then seeing the celestial car come to take him yudhishthira moved by kindness towards the dog that accompanied him refused to ascend it without his companion observing the illustrious yudhishthira's steady adherence to virtue dharma the god of justice abandoning his canine form showed himself to the king then yudhishthira ascending to heaven felt much pain the celestial messenger showed him hell by an act of deception then yudhishthira the soul of justice heard the heart rending lamentations of his brothers abiding in that region under the discipline of yam then dharma and indra showed yudhishthira the region appointed for sinners then yudhishthira after leaving the human body by a plunge in the celestial ganges attained to that region which his acts merited and began to live in joy respected by indra and all other gods this is the 18th parva as narrated by the illustrious vyasa the number of shlokas composed o ascetics by the great rishi in this is 209 the above are the contents of the 18 parvas in the appendix kita are the harivansa and the vavishya the number of shlokas contained in the harivansa is 12000 These are the contents of the section called Parvasandraha. Sauti continued, 18 Akshanhinis of troops came together for battle. The encounter that ensued was terrible and lasted for 18 days. He who knows the four Vedas with all the Angas and Upanishads, but does not know this history, Bharatha, cannot be regarded as wise. Vyasa of immeasurable intelligence, has spoken of the mahabharata as a treatise on artha on dharma and on kama those who have listened to his history can never bear to listen to others as indi they who have listened to the sweet voice of the male kokila can never hear the dissonance of the cross coin as the formation of the three worlds proceedeth from the five elements so do the inspirations of all poets proceed from this excellent composition O ye brahman as the four kinds of creatures viviparous oviparous born of hot moisture and vegetables are dependent on space for their existence so the puranas depend upon this history as all the senses depend for their exercise upon the various modifications of the mind so do all acts ceremonials and moral qualities depend upon this treatise There is not a story current in the world but doth depend on this history even as body upon the food it take all poets cherish the bharatha even as servants desirous of preferment always attend upon masters of good lineage even as the blessed domestic asrama can never be surpassed by the three other asramas modes of life so no poets can surpass this poem 
ये एसेटिक्स शेक ऑफ ऑल इन एक्शन लेट योर हार्ट बी फिक्स ऑन वर्चू फॉर वर्चू इज द वन ओनली फ्रेंड ऑफ हिम दैट हैज गॉन टू दी अदर वर्ल्ड Even the most intelligent by cherishing wealth and wives can never make these their own nor are these possessions lasting the bharatha uttered by the lips of vapaina is without a parallel it is virtue itself and sacred it destroyeth sin and produceth good he that listeneth to it while it is being recited hath no need of a bath in the sacred waters of pushkara a brahmana whatever sins he may commit during the day through his senses is freed from them all by reading the bharatha in the evening whatever sins he may commit also in the might hy deeds words or mind he is freed from them all by reading bharatha in the first twilight morning he that giveth a hundred kine with horns mounted with gold to a brachanesha well posted up in the vedas and all branches of learning and he that daily listeneth to the sacred narrations of the bharatha acquireth equal merit as the wide ocean is easily passable by men having ships so is this extensive history of great excellence and deep import with the help of this chapter called parvasangraha thus endeth the section called parvasangraha of the adi parva of the blessed mahabharata